G'day everyone. I just want to talk to you today about vibes. You might have heard people referring to a vibe. I caught a nice yellow belly on a vibe, or I caught a nice red fin on a vibe. A vibe is a word used in the fishing industry to describe a lure that vibrates. It's a vibrating lure. Here with me today, I have a couple of different vibes. The one which I've got rigged up on my line is a blade. This is a blade. It's called a blade because it's very narrow, like the blade of a knife, but it's also a vibe because it's designed to vibrate through the water. It's sculpted on the bottom with lead to make it really heavy, and that design of that lead sort of flares out a little bit to capture the water just to make it vibrate left and right. These vibrate like nothing else, so they're a vibe. But you usually call them a blade because they're a vibrating blade lure. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. This is a lipless crankbait. In some parts of the world they call them a rattlebait. It's very similar to the blade except it's not skinny and narrow. It's actually quite round. It's hollow in the middle and it's got a few ball bearings or something in it so it makes it rattle. And that's why some places in the world, particularly the United States, refer to these as a rattlebait. So we've got a rattlebait or a lipless crankbait, some people call them, and a blade. They both come in the same sort of swim pattern. They vibrate like mad. The blades, in my opinion, vibrate a lot harder, whereas the lipless crankbait or the rattlebaits rattle to send out noise and disturbance through the water. They're both equally as effective as each, as each other. Now, for me personally, I find with the blades, Blades are great for trout in lakes. I've caught a lot of trout in these blades in lakes. You cast them out, you reel them in a bit, then you pause to let them sink. Then you give them a bit of a, a heave up, and you reel in the slack. And you reef up a bit and you reel in the slack, and you just continue that pattern. I think some people call that a rolling retrieve, but I could be wrong. But I find that these work well, particularly just under the surface, when the trout are up close to the surface late in the afternoon or early in the morning. Now some blades, or blades should have holes in them at the top. This is a TT switchblade, a 7 gram blade, and it has four holes. The back hole helps the blade sit more upright. The front hole helps it sit more vertical like that, sorry, more horizontal like that. So the back blade, the back hole, by having it more upright like that, it creates a stronger vibration and creates a lot more pull on the lure which creates a stronger vibration and also helps the lure to sit higher in the water column. So if I'm casting out here today and I want to reel it in just under the surface to some fish that I can see rising, I want to use that back hole to keep that up close to the bottom. If I want to target redfin, I want to use the front hole because that sitting more horizontal in the water like that, it hasn't got as much water pressure against it and it allows it to sink more while it's being retrieved. So long story short, the further back you put the little clip, the shallower it will run and the harder it will vibrate. The further forward you put it, the deeper it will run and the less it will vibrate. And then there's a couple of holes in the middle just to help you get an average. If the water's not too deep, you might want to just have it one back from the front. Or if the water's, you know, you just want a metre or so under, you might want to have it the second hole back. Just a quick warning with blades. All, if all manufacturers of blades have problems with tangling, all blades tangle. It's just a trade-off for a lure that is such a great versatile lure on the perch species, golden perch and, and English perch or redfin, and also the trout species. It's a very versatile lure, but they will tangle from time to time. Some lures tangle more than others, but they all have a habit of tangling a little bit. And sometimes just changing the hole can also affect the, the amount of times it tangles. I find the TT switchblade, which I'm using here, and I've been using this one for quite a few years now, I find that's not too bad when it comes to tangling. The lipless crankbait, these are the preferred lure for the yellow belly hunters. The yellow belly or golden perch fanatics that head to Lake Yeldon and Lake Hume, every in Blowering and places like that every year in the springtime, they love lipless crankbaits. And a lot of them love jackals. Personally, I've never tied a jackal on, so I can't say anything about them. They look really cool, that's all I know. This one that I picked up today at Adventure Camping and Fishing in Wangaratta, that's a river, river to sea. I think it was $10 or $10.50. Great looking little lure. I've had a few casts with it just while I've been here and it looks really, really good in the water. I've chosen a really small one. It looks like it's only three or three and a half centimetres long. That's because I think it'll be great for redfin and I'm hoping I can get a trout on it. I can't vouch for the rattlebaits or the lipless crankbaits as a trout lure, but I sure as hell can for the blades because I have caught stacks of trout on blades in both rivers and in lakes. 
I am wondering whether the rattle inside the lipless crankbait might make too much noise and just make the wary trout a little bit more uh, alert. I'm not sure, but there's only one way to find out, and I'm going to give it a crack tonight and see if I can uh, see if I can use this on a trout. But if, if if the trout don't like this tonight, I'll try it again at other times and other places. But if I find it's not a good trout lure, I know that it will be a dynamite redfin and golden perch lure. Whereas the blade. I already know from, from using these things for years, years of experience, that the blades are going to work really, really well on trout and redfin and golden perch. I've caught all of those fish species on blades, and I wouldn't mind betting that a Murray Cod will hit a large blade too. I've never tried it, but I think it would work. I hope this gives you a great understanding of what vibes are. Vibes. Vibrating lures. And let me just tell you one more thing. When you're fishing with vibes, and it doesn't matter what kind of vibe it is, it's okay to break out into song and start singing good vibrations by the Beatle, by the by the Beach Boys, sorry. Doodle doodle oh good vibrations. <laughs>